That'll be a thousand twenty-five. All right, looks like I made a lot of money, as long as I have my margins right. What we're gonna do today is color inside the margins. Today's episode is gonna all be about margins. So basically, how you come up with your margins is you take all your costs all year long. You can get a better idea after your first year, but you know after the first month, you can then extrapolate over a whole year. Ooh, I used a big $10 word. Across the whole year, and then that will tell you what you're making in margins. The old rule of thumb was that you needed to make 30%. Um, that, doesn't, that doesn't hold water anymore. 30% won't keep you in business. Uh, it'll keep you broke and struggling. Uh, you gotta make it, you know, you gotta make 40 and 50% margins on uh, a good percentage of your stuff uh, to pay yourself to pay your bills and to be prepared when you know a big collection comes in uh, that you have some cash. Now, uh, everybody knows the way I run my business, I don't run it on credit, right? So I don't have a line of credit from the bank. So if somebody brings in a really, really big collection, a super expensive collection, uh, can I buy it or not? Well, whatever we have in the bank account, that's the choice, right? So. Try to save up for it and you know into the future. Uh, but this is all gonna be about margins. Simple, this week's new comics out. These are uh, DC and Marvel. This is a $4.99 comic. This is a $4.99 comic. Do I make the same margins? No, because DC has screwed you if you do not buy enough books. They have cut my margin down to 35%. Uh, and then there's shipping costs from uh, Lunar. So I'm probably around 30% with their books. I'm bringing in less and less, so I don't even put up the books every week. Uh, why am I bringing in less and less? Because the profit margin's not there, right? I, we need to keep the store open. They're not my partner in keeping my store open, so I will not be their partner in pushing their books or trying to sell their books. Now, they would say, oh, you need to sell more of our books so that you can get back to the 50% margin, which is not a true 50% after you pay for shipping. But what we want to look at is that how can you increase your margins on particular items? Now, one of the things I do is, uh, we've talked about it many times before, how I acquire uh, used uh, back issues of comics, magic, Pokemon, all that. I pay a, a flat 40%. That gives me a 60% um, margin. That 60% margin can be eaten by if I have to sell the item on eBay. If I sell it on eBay, there's 20%, and everybody's like, no, eBay's 12.5%. If you don't have tens of thousands of sales on eBay and 100%, your items end up at the very bottom of a list. And when you're selling something that's, you know, not super unique, uh, there can be pages and pages of items and you're gonna be at the very bottom of those pages. So you have to pay a percentage to advertise your item so people on eBay will see it. And I usually pay about 8%. So there you go, there's that 20% that I keep talking about. So now my margin's down to 40%. I pay somebody to uh, put the items on eBay. So when I do that, I try to get them to put a certain number, get a certain number up a day when they're here doing it. And that way it's easier for me to figure out the margins that I have left after I've paid them um, for, for putting the stuff up on eBay. Another rule I live by on eBay is nothing goes up on eBay that's less than $50. Now, is it a hard, hard rule? No, I put up $40 items. Um, I usually like to match $40 items, two of them together, so it's an, really like an $80 sale. Uh, why do I do that? I do that to increase my margins for when I have a person that's putting them up. The, high, the larger number allows the mar a little bit more room in the margins. Uh, you know, $100 sale on an item I might have picked up for, let's say I was making a several hundred percent margin, maybe even a thousand percent margin on the item, uh, <clears throat> then it's well worth it. 
to put it up there. If I buy a huge collection of toys and I pay, let's say $10 a toy, and then I sell that toy for 100, it, that's not 90% margin, that's nine times your money, which is like 9,000% margin. It, it gets ridiculous when, when you start to extrapolate some of these, but the key is, is that home runs are what's gonna help you in your margins. And another way of doing that is mostly on used items. When people come in and trade for items, you're like what, in the stock market, they have something called margining down, which um, you buy an item, you buy a stock at $100 and it drops. You know, a lot of them say, if you, if you believe in it, you'll buy more and then instead of you know, costing you $100, it now costs you, let's say it goes down to 75, it's gonna cost you somewhere in between 75 and 100, probably 83 or $84. Then if it drops to 50 and you buy more, now you're gonna drop down to 75, maybe $70. And if it goes back up to 100, then you make the profit between, you know, seven, let's say 70 and 100, you'll make $30 a share. It's the same with trading items in. So if I have a $100 card, somebody's gonna give me $200 uh, in retail uh, for that $100 in cards, because we give 50% in trade. So now, that $100 card is now $200. If I do it again, then it's $400, and then it's $800, and there's the exponential change again. Uh, it keeps going up and up and up, and we do that with video games, and we do that with Magic and Pokemon. Comics, it's more of a, a rarity for people to do that, but uh, I do do it if they, if they want. Maybe they're looking to get out of a lot of bulk and they're looking to get into a bigger book. I do bulk uh, for higher dollar comics. I do not do bulk for higher dollar magic or Pokemon. Bulk comics sell way better for me than bulk magic or bulk Pokemon. On the contrary of uh, margining uh, down, uh, which for us when we trade, we margin up, but there's also a time to cut your losses because it, it does cost money to let it sit just on the shelf because you could be putting an item on that shelf that would sell tomorrow. And an item that hasn't sold in a long time, it's time to cut your losses, take whatever percentage you can get, and move on. Um, that's a pretty simple uh, tenant in business, is uh, there is a time to move on from stuff. Now, if you have good storage, put it in a bin and put it away, and you never know three or four years from now, you uncase it and everybody wants it. But if you don't have the, you know, you don't want to pay extra to, to also to store it if it's a dead item. Just sell it and get rid of it and move on. When you're really tight on your margins, if an item goes down, you're able to go down and still be making a good margin. If you buy a big collection and you find a very expensive book in it and you have a ridiculous amount of money in it, you can move it at a very quickly at a discounted price and you're still making a tremendous amount of money. So don't always hold out for the last penny because the item could go down. I mean, I've done it. That's why I'm recommending that you don't. So I had a, a snowman from Thundercats unpunched on card from I think 80, I wanna say 84 or 85. It's beautiful, it's mint, mint, mint. The plastic is crisp, there's no dents in it. I've had it four or five years now. And it started out at 800, then it went to 600. Now I have it like 385 and I still haven't sold it. Um, I'm very sad I didn't take an offer years ago. I got an offer of 500 when I had it up for 800. So now I'm actually, I've lost money, potential. Not actual money because I did buy it right uh, in a large collection. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it looks like I'm probably going to get, end up selling it for somewhere in the, around the $300 range, $285, $300. Uh, could I keep it for another four or five years because it's a single item? Yeah, maybe, but that's back to cutting your losses, taking your, taking your win and going on. When you're figuring your margins in, like I said, you have to put in all your costs, personnel, insurance, everything that we've talked about throughout the whole show. And it really starts to cut your margins, you know, down. Like when you're, 
When you're talking about 35% on this comic, the cost of my overhead and pay, insurance, overhead is all that stuff. I'm, I'm kind of regurgitating the same thing. But I might not make anything on this comic. And oh, why do you even carry it if there's a zero margin? Um, because the person who's coming in to get this um, Godzilla vs. Justice League that I make no money on uh, might buy a toy. They might buy a Marvel comic, which maybe I make 12% or 8, uh, 8 to 12% margin on. They might buy a, a pop. Maybe I have a Justice League pop. They come in for the Justice League comic, they buy a Justice League pop, and I'm making 50% margin on the, on the pop. So <clears throat> this goes into the fact of, is this almost a loss leader? Well, sort of. Uh, more so, loss leader would be like Free Comic Book Day, uh, Comic Fest around Halloween, where I'm buying the comic and then I'm giving it away for free. Now, I'm not paying a lot for it. We pay about anywhere from 15 cents to 30 cents a comic for the free comic book day. And then we give them away free and we hope two things. One, maybe when they're here getting the free comics, that they buy a comic or a toy um, or a soda, anything to one, pay for that comic uh, that I gave away for free. Uh, and two, make a profit margin, hopefully a profit margin on something else they're looking at. The other thing is, is that it's advertising. So it's also then, not only is it a loss leader, but it's advertising. It's people are finding the place, knowing that we're here. When you're giving away free comics and having an event like that, people come in. That goes into my costs and cutting our margins uh, down. So you have to find high margin things. And there is a lot of ancillary items, accessory items that you can get very cheap, that you, you know, supplies for comics used to be a very good money maker. Uh, solid, solid 50 to 65% margins. The problem is the cost of plastic and cardboard has gone up uh, and it's very hard to charge any more than we were already charging for it. So since we were at the top end of our margins and our costs have got higher, the, the margins on the supplies for comics, not quite as great as they used to be. Uh, but uh, bags and boards uh, used to be a, a good money maker. If you sell singles, uh, believe it or not, they're still a pretty decent money maker at 25 cents. Some people charge 50 cents a bag and board. Um, I charge 25 cents. It's pretty much exactly what you'd, you'd pay if you bought 100 bags and boards for me, it's $25, it's 25 cents a piece, it's because it's 100. Uh, I try to keep it in there, just, I, again, for me, I think that that's not a loss leader, but something, a gift to the customer, uh, you know, for buying here at this store. Um, and I'm still making pretty decent margins. After it's all said and done, probably not as decent as I think. <laughs> because you have to make each bag and board, they don't come all already made. But that's what I'm saying is back into the, that effect of like the cost. Anytime you add value by taking a bag and a board and putting them together, you're adding value, there's more cost. So you wanna really be, man, I'm just nuts about my margins. That's why I did a whole, I'm doing a whole show on it because margins will keep you in business. Uh, through tough times, through hard times, if you are a stickler on your margins, uh, you can, you can survive a long time and you can prosper. You just keep putting a dollar away a day, you know, just keep putting that money away and it builds and builds and builds. Bulk comics, you know, you find a bread and butter item. For me, it's bulk comics. I sell 50 cent comics and dollar comics. I sell hundreds, hundreds uh, a week. Um, I probably do a thousand a month in bulk books. Um, and how that works out is that I pay eight to 10 cents a piece, probably on the high end, I might pay 25 cents if they're new books. Um, so, you know, making 75 cents on each book is a good margin, but you have to move a lot, right? So now we've started doing conventions uh, where we move a lot more of those books. Uh, where the margins are even better. So it's, a, it's like having a second store for a day. Some conventions are two days. I kind of do the single small, I like the small conventions. 
Um, you know, we usually do, you know, like a whole day at the store is what we'll make at a, at a small con. So it's like having an extra day of the week uh, on the sales and my, it's really high margin stuff that I take there. Uh, people come there with money, they mean to spend it, you just have to convince them to spend it with you. The other part on the, the margins that's important is that when you are um, buying stuff, you have to be f correct on your margins from the get, right? You have to be very, very uh, specific in, of what the items is because sometimes there's a lot of different items. There's repops. You have to be buying right all the time. Um, like I said, the 40% uh, is on the items that I can sell right away. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I consider bu bulk, which I pay very little for, but I still do sell very well. And when somebody comes in and all they have is bulk, I'm quite excited. Because uh, to me, that's big dollar signs. Uh, it's, it's inventory that um, is, you know, evergreen when you're talking about back issues of comics. The other thing is, is that bulk turns into, you know, nowadays in comics, I don't know how long it's going to continue, but if you're buying collectibles, the bulk of today is the collectible of tomorrow. Uh, all of a sudden, a certain character becomes sought after. It gets harder to get. So the, the item you spent eight or 10 cents for as a first appearance is now a $50 book. You know, the margins on that are insane. So keep a good eye out. Think really hard about your margins. Um, if you think you're getting 30%, make sure you're getting 30%. Because the 30% that they've talked about for years is not before uh, you, you take in consideration all your costs, it's after. That's what you survive on. Uh, that's what you pay yourself out of. Uh, that's what your store lives on as cash flow. Keep that in mind, keep reading comics, and open a comic store.